Hello everybody, welcome back to Wampleville, and welcome back to our quest for the Golden Demons. Not sure what you want to call it, but something along those lines. Now we've got ourselves, actually now this is our third miniature right here in this batch. And I think you can kind of sense the theme here. Little bit of a theme here. Let's get uh, let's get this guy out here, and you can certainly see a little bit of a theme going on, right? And actually, this one has been rebased. I still got to do that with this guy. Got to chop him off of that 32 and put him on a 48 armored wolf. So yeah, this one, this one got a new base. This one still have to do that yet. So we'll slice him off of there. That seemed to work okay here. And well, we've got. A couple of more that we did during that video, and here's oh here's another one. So yeah, we still have to do some some more well, some purity seals, some other added doodads, this that and the others. But we'll paint this guy up tonight because he's all ready to go. He is ready to go, and obviously we're going to be doing the same theme on the shield right here. Uh, I don't know. I might have to stick that one on another. Let one of these dead paint containers and then maybe also have that side by side. So what we'll do is uh, I'll probably be painting at least two more possibly on stream. I gotta, I'll gotta, i do one on Saturday maybe and then possibly one more on Monday. I don't know, maybe just to finish things off. But again, this is hopefully what I'll be able to paint tomorrow. We'll see how that works. Hey, Grim. Oh, thanks, Grim. Yeah, um... Uh, there was it was kind of wild doing this and grim the i think the experiment worked because this stuff's not going anywhere i mean i'm, I'm hitting that pretty hard and it's not coming off so i, I think that is going to be a cheaper better alternative at least hopefully than than the usual texture pastes more reliable i suppose so uh grim again i uh Sorry that you didn't get to stream this week with all of the all the work stuff happening, but well, hopefully that all gets settled real quick and you can get back into the end of the swing of things. Speaking of the swing of things here, we're hitting the lower part of this with a little bit of the brown matter. Still some of the Van Dyke brown in here as well. Just a smidge of that. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. I'm going to do some of that on the back of the shield, I think, too. If I remember right, that is what we did. Now i got to figure out what's going on with the sword there. We want maximum glow, minimum glow. What, what do we want going on there? Don't don't know yet. It's uh, one of those things we'll just kind of figure out as we go along. We'll just figure it out as it happens. Here, what the heck. I'm just going to toss this on here, too. Because whatever. No big deal. we got... We got a long ways to go here yet. All right, I think we can start to wipe some of this away. Sponge time. A couple of these. And let's just start down here. Let's just start down here. This is the absorbent stuff. We know the, the sculpey, the cork. Let's take some of this away. I did throw a couple of, well, I was going to say pins, but my paper clips in there because those are sort of acting like rebar for all intents and purposes. Now, if you remember what we did on the other ones, we, we, we wiped, oh, look at how much of an absorbent that uh, liquid green stuff is. If you remember, after doing this, we did go back in there and hit it with some of the Indian yellow before we went in with stuff like the brilliant yellow pale and you now cadmium yellow in a couple of spots too so this is that deliciously messy part right here where it just looks hideous looks absolutely terrible that's what it's supposed to do people don't know that but as, as you look at the difference there the pre-glaze can make let me just shove that in there and whatever. Whatever. Okay. Grab ourselves a different brush. See if we can do some of our indigo and Prussian blue. 
No, that's still got junk in there. Let's see if we can find a somewhat smaller brush. Maybe not. Maybe we've just used them all up. All right, you know what? I, I might just go ahead with this then. No, nah, well, what the heck? Why not? Let's just use it here. Prussian blue. <clears throat> Sorry, a little bit of indigo. Maybe get a little bit of thinner for the <clears throat> some of those deeper sections. All right, Doji, you have a good one. Well, we'll be we'll be doing the this stuff. Oh, that's right. That's gonna be yellow there. We'll be doing another one of these for sure on Saturday. So hopefully you get to see that one. But hopefully all the the <clears throat> hopefully all the supplies that you were able to secure those have reached the people that need them. Ooh, almost almost went a little too far there. Got to remember that that is actually supposed to be yellow right there. <clears throat> Sorry about the voice. Oh gosh, we're going to have to also get some of our uh, Indian yellow in there. But first, I want to hit this and wipe some of it away as we've done before. Got to figure out what's going on with that sword there. My thought is some kind of glowing green i guess that's uh the the same as what we did on the little diodes there on the back of the shield so probably something along those lines might throw a little bit of the fluorescent green on there might not don't know yet we, we can kind of take our time and work our way through the color scheme here we can also change it at any time things are <laughs> prone to change lots of things prone to change let's keep just throwing some of this on here again nothing fancy all i want to do is just get to you know what the heck with it we're just going to cover that just get that covered up that also needs to be blue there I hope no. No, we still got some more over here. Uh, indigo, Prussian blue. Now I went way too thick on the oils. Uh, well, Alexander, you have to have practically no paint on the brush. Uh, this is pr almost a dry brush right here, and constantly that's as I apply paint. There is very little paint on the brush. I can't think of it like acrylics where you've got a generous amount of it on the brush. It has to be almost none. That, that's why I always joke about if you think you have no paint on the brush, get rid of half of it. If you think your brush is absolutely, totally devoid of oil paint, take half of that off. You can never have too little oil paint. You can always have too much. You can always have too much paint on there. So less is more, more is always way too much and it always will be it, it's just all i can say is less and by less i mean a lot less because look at this that little bit of prussian blue and indigo look at that talk about a staining color there and that's nowhere near what the williamsburg indigo does now, Williamsburg Indigo is insane. It's absolutely crazy. Wipe some more of this away as we can. Oh, more over here for sure. And I don't care if some of the blue just kind of uh, migrates a little bit here and there because go to go somewhere it must go well everywhere right must go everywhere so what i might do is throw the one of our previous ones on a one of my little dead paint jars so that we can have maybe a little side by side action all right where's yeah let's just get the paint out of that brush right away here and you could wipe it off on a paper towel you could i just kind of squeegee it off on the palette but i mean you could have just a paper towel nearby and just you know wipe some of the paint out of the brush that would also work 
and not a lot of liquid either. That's I think that's another thing that folks do is they just uh, they thin the heck out of it because they're thinking acrylics, and that also doesn't end very well for them. So yeah, those kind of things uh, don't necessarily end well. Too much liquid, too much paint. Those not going to work. Always less of those things. Now this has a little bit of Indian yellow in it. So hopefully that contributes to some of the staining power of it. Well, it should anyways. See, even that might have been a little too much thinner right there. Even that tiny little bit that I just put in. Maybe even that's too much. But we're going to start to fire in some Indian yellow here because that's again a staining color when we come into this with the brilliant yellow pale and such should make a big difference so again, I'm just uh, this is about as dry as I can make it here so that's sort of changing the color back here a little bit more towards the yellow hey Sarge how you doing Nice to see you. We don't mind one of these. So, Sarge, much appreciated. Sure you're still... Well, maybe are you driving home from work? Or is work hopefully over with? And you're back at the... You're back at Bodieville. And just kind of hanging out with the dogs and chilling out and relaxing. Again, this is essentially almost like a dry brush of some Indian yellow here. Do we have it on his other foot? Looks like we do. Chuck a little bit of that on there as well. And then I'm going to, well, do another little dry brushy thing of uh, a little bit of our brown matter over there. Hey, PMP Project, nice to see you. And Phaedros. Uh, so Phaedros... Uh, that's that is just insane that how many times now uh i, I guess uh was it long enough in between to be different uh, different versions of it or whatever cuz i know i guess everybody's uh you it that's not a sampler that you want right that's uh, you will take a you'll take a pass on that little sampler platter i think uh -huh, look at that see See how I white the see how the in uh, Indian yellow stays stays behind there. Yeah, not a surprise. It's just it's always wild to see that. All right, so where, where's our? <laughs> there you go. You can I mean you can already see how that's starting that the sheeting is built up a little bit here. What I will do is just throw him on one of these. Uh, three for that, so four overall. And, uh, oh, look at that. That's quite the sample platter right there. Um, yeah, you wish that that salad bar came with a sneeze guard, I guess. That is, yeah, that's not the salad bar that you would like to sample over and over again. Ah, oh, you're back at the barracks. That's cool, Sarge. And thanks so much for the shamrock shake. Of course, that is appreciated. Now, the first one, where the heck did he go? The first one here... Uh, sunflower will always be the the primary thing but we kind of changed things around a little bit we did we went from the red at the, oh we should do some blue there then I think we'll do blue there so sunflowers then blue and then something else so we'll we'll give that a shot let's try that too. hey under deep nice to see you and thanks so much for the kind words uh, what we'll try and do here is just get something something established real quick we know we want to have some yellow here. I think we've, yeah, we've already wiped away the paint. Mm, that's, that's too far up. Too far up, I think. That should end right about there. Okay. Maybe a little too much of the other. A little bit more Indian yellow in that. And Tharch, hopefully everything is, is all... Uh, all set, ready to go uh, for a few weeks from now. Definitely wish there was more time. Oh, what we should do is some yellow. We did green, we did red. Let's uh, see if we can have some yellow here 
for an alpha. Oh, look at that. See how it's just mixing with that pre-glaze? Mixing with the pre-glaze. We, we just love that. So PMP project, I hope that you're doing well. And you had a good good week. Uh, I mean, and maybe uh, maybe got some fun plans for the weekend. Or, or just chilling out. Either way, chilling is good. Fun is good. I don't know. Do I want to do that? No, maybe we won't do the hand there this time. Maybe we won't do that. Gonna... Do I want to do some... Yeah, what the heck. Let's just hit a little bit of that out here along the edge. Okay. Let's get some some darks in here. I'm just going to grab me a couple of brushes here, see what we have. That's the one we're going to use for right now. Uh, oh, so Sarge uh, did this. Uh, it was a test to see if I could make my own texture paste, and it does look like it worked. And all it was, I mean, you can do this right away. It's just spackle, wood glue, and sand. That's all it was. I will do more experiments and, and see what other kind of things are possible, but that at least worked out uh, pretty well. I was I was happy about that. Didn't know what was going to happen, but seems to have worked out okay. I wasn't really sure until, you know, couldn't be sure until the next day, really, when I had a, a, a chance to kind of see it and assess what it had actually done. And maybe about uh, that size. Okay. Get a little bit of dark in there for the for the eyes. Start to work there. Again, we got the sunflowers here. That'll always be our first row. Will be the sunflowers, I believe. Uh, let's see. Oh, finally. Oh, the fever finally broke. Uh, I, and uh, so you, you could actually taste it, right? Because that's, that's the other thing is that the, the taste goes away. So when someone says you have no taste, you can say, I genuinely have no taste. Leave me alone. Just give me a break. Now, which... Which blue did we want to, you know, let's just go with maybe something that's not quite as the same sort of blue as what we've got on the armor. But later, let's just pop in some of our blue here around the edge of this. Like you do. There's our blue. And then we'll do a, uh, yeah, we'll do a blue trim on the dress too. So each one of these, the idea is to have a little different little different look to it now there is one of the one of these guys that he still actually has a whole uh, like whatever the hanging skeleton off his thing and I was gonna sculpt some roses around the hair or around the head ah yeah that's uh I was sorry sorry to hear about that that just woof that does not sound grand whatsoever I think you'll I think you'll take a pass on those from now on. Now that you've experienced the entire sample platter, you say, okay, that's that's it for me. I know what they all taste like. Not interested in any more. Push this out just a little bit that way. Grab another one of these guys. And let's start to maybe get some lighter skin tones in here as well, just to figure out what we want to have. Tierra Rosa, a little Indian yellow. Let me just make sure. Okay. That would seem to be right there on, on camera for everybody to see. And then I start to work in some lighter skin tones. And again, every single brush stroke is going to cause that to merge and mix with the colors that are already there, which means I gotta come back here and get some new colors. 
Uh, let's see. So yeah, I guess uh, I guess the demon, uh, the demon prince of Nurgle is is definitely your. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be your your demon from now on, I guess. Because uh, you guys seem to have quite the close association. You know, maybe we will do that. I don't know. We, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure that out. We can always, we can go lighter here too. Yes, we can still go lighter here. Uh, again, all I'm trying to do is figure out where do we want exactly the the face to be. Do we have it the right size? I think it's about the right size, and I'm also not going to have the hand on there. So we'll do something a little bit different. With the, uh, yeah, 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 we can do this. We could do something like this. Let's do... We haven't had anything like this. Because I'm seeing lots of, yeah, lots of beads and stuff. Oh, let, let's do some beads. Let's just do that here and see what that looks like. Let's do something a little bit different. Hi, awful high collars on some of these uh, dresses here. Hey, Rooster Rhythm, how you doing? You know, I might also do some flowers here in her hand or something like that. So nice to see you, Rooster Rhythm. Hope that you're doing well. Let me see, what, what about another color? Maybe we will do some green here. What the heck? Some blue and then maybe some green. Let's have another round of these. Again, just some uh, these beads right here because there is an awful lot of them on, on some of these uh, some of these folks here. So back to maybe some blue again. Yeah, so something like this. See how this works. And then, and then maybe we'll just do a little turquoisey thing or something like that for under the eyes maybe Let's see what happens when we do that maybe a little too much liquid there a little too much liquid ah scribbler nice to see you back nice to see you back so oh yeah we should probably show we we did that at the very beginning but not since so we do have I, i'm i'm going to try and see if we can paint this up tomorrow so this is the Ghost of Kiev, the, the MiG-29 there. So we'll see if we can paint that up tomorrow night. Anyways, should be interesting. Uh, again, I've got, uh, well, it, oh, Sarge, thanks again for uh, sending me the, the patterns, right? So there should be some interesting patterns that we can work with. Uh, a couple of markings. I'm just going to try and round these things out also a little bit here. Let me see if I can throw in. Oh, you know what? Let's do this again. That was a while ago when I last popped in some thinner there into the white. Let's get this going now. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's just throw a little bit of the the light here. Just a little bit of the light here. So again, uh, this is our our glory for Kiev. Uh, chapter right here. So uh, we got the Snake Island flag there. We've got St. Michael's Cathedral. We have, well, in multiple places, we've got the, the crest there. And, uh, and of course, uh, traditional header with the sunflowers, right? And if you look on this one, you can see the white Z 
right there and this one is also going to have that right here so right in that open space you'll see the white z over there okay let me see if i can no we'll go with the dark first yeah we'll, we'll put the dark in that before we get to but here first let's take a little bit of our chamomile a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale and let's start to just find some lights here in the outfit might have to thin this down but i don't want to thin that down too much though uh so yep uh Phaedros, if you've seen any any of the news all of the vehicles uh and that's that's any kind of invading force is always going to have some sort of very distinct vehicle recognition marking on there so that they don't take out each other's vehicles and that's actually become quite the rallying symbol inside the uh, attacking country but obviously in the uh, the other the defending country that symbol is seen a little bit differently and I do believe that uh, some tank columns were taken out earlier today, Michael Vittman style. Hit the front vehicle, hit the back vehicle, and then uh, just kind of take out everything in between. That's the way it works, right, Sarge? That, uh, that seems to be, uh, fortunately, it still works even in today's day and age. It worked years ago, it still works today. Vehicle in front goes boom, vehicle in back goes boom. Everything in between is uh, like Winter War in 39. It's like multi tactics. You just chop it all up like firewood. And uh, somebody didn't read their history text about the Winter War of 39 because they pretty much uh, repeated absolutely everything from the winter war of 39 right down to the sausage wars um so rooster rhythm uh i was a portrait paint painter by trade well we'll show you later well, we'll get to that in a bit, Rooster Rhythm, because, uh, of course, we want to uh, welcome in all of our raiders here. So, Commander Mittens, thank you so much for the raid. That is appreciated. And, of course, if everybody could please give Commander Mittens a follow there, that would be fantastic. Ah, so Phaedros knows what we're talking Oh, look at this. We got ourselves a Rifkan. Rifkan, how are you doing? So, for all of our raiders, we are working on our... Well, Road to Golden Demons here. Uh, we're painting ourselves a, a Space Marine chapter with a, a bit of a theme to it. Might be somewhat recognizable vaguely for anyone that uh, probably is conscious and may be breathing. So that's that's our theme for this particular chapter right down to the, we're just talking about the white Z right there. So thanks so much, Commander Ritten, Mittens. And hey, crew, how you doing? So yeah, we've got, uh, this is the one we painted last week. Well, this one too. So we painted these two last week. I went ahead and did some more. I think I did three more conversions, I believe. Yeah. And we've got, uh, I think maybe uh, this one we might paint up on Saturday. Uh, we also have, of course, where's our, uh, oh, here he is. So this was a charity figure that we did. Where's our Commander Z? There he is kind of all started with this when we painted up this uh, this is from reptilian overlords you can go to the reptilian overlords you pledge whatever you can and you get the STO file so there you go so commander mittens right now there's six right now there's six of them now crew I wish you luck on the filament printer because those can be finicky those filament printers right so again, here is. Uh, Hello, little harmon. Spark my gun. Thank you so much, Relic Nom. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, again, uh, 
you can kind of get a sense for the, the theme that's happening here. The sunflowers, right down to the sunflowers, everything. And you can see where we were just getting started here. We're just uh, getting into the freehand on the shield right now. Uh, so thanks, Command. And if ever, again, everybody, please give Commander Mittens a follow. And Commander Mittens, of course, you know the usual. If you want to uh, post any links to stuff that you're working on in the chat, that would be fantastic. Here, let's, uh, let's get some more of the sunflowers here. Let's just do this bit because we know we need to do this here. We know we need to get that going. And then we'll probably do some more darks in the hair as well. Bam. Uh, so Commander Mittens, uh, yeah, uh, trying to get a few things for Golden Demons. I mean, nothing nothing crazy because it really doesn't, you know, it's not that big a deal. It's It's not something that we... It's, just, it's been a long, long time since I last was able to do the Golden Demons. In fact, well, here's our, our where it, there he goes. There he is. So this was, I think, the last Golden Demons that I was able to participate in. And this was uh, one of the things that got a little demon in the Lord of the Rings arena. Oh, well, crew, that sounds, that sounds cool. Can't go wrong with a Bane Blade now and then. Oh, thanks, Rifkan. Jeez, Rifkan, I hope that you're doing well. I, it, it's been a little while. It's been a little while, so hopefully all is well. Let me see if I can. Ah, there we are. There's some of our Fanchion Red over there. Let's see if we can start to... Get a little more expression on the face here, if we can. Uh, so yeah, Rooster Rhythm back in the day here. We'll, we'll just kind of scroll up to some of the old uh, stuff that we used to do. But here we go. Here we go. So uh, there's some 2D stuff from back in the day. That Again, my training is watercolors, pastels, oils, and portrait painting that was my favorite thing so yeah definitely a, a, you can see some of that and here's a, again some more stuff this is a, an oil painting I did way back in the day I think I was 13 when I painted that one and again to, uh, some more fun here with the 2d art so uh, again that and we've done a whole bunch of new 2d art uh, on the stream of course lots of Lord of the Rings themed stuff so that uh, kind of should answer your question about the faces. Hey, Zero, how you doing? Nice to see you again. And again we'll come back in with the lighter bits of the uh, Sunflowers too. Probably should just darken that and like, like so, yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks so much, Underdeep. Yeah, the that painting. Uh, boy, I just wish I knew then what I know now about the, about the. Uh, that was when, when you're 13. You don't really know a whole bunch about such things. So there was a lot of lot of learning things the hard way, to say the least, on uh, on that one. But also take a fraction of the time today. Ah, zero. I hope that the I hope that the oils were fun. I know that there can be a bit of a learning curve involved with the oils, so hopefully it was still fun and well, hopefully successful. Hopefully, uh, you had at least a little bit of fun with it. I know it can be very different from the acrylics, of course. Ah, okay. Now the other thing that you can do, of course, and I, I talk about this in all of my tutorial videos, where's that thousand sun? So, you know, here you, you could draw it out ahead of time. You could draw it out several times. Then even draw it in at scale, right? To the, the scale you're actually gonna paint it at on the, the miniature there. So you've got that muscle memory. So there's uh, lots of different ways you could approach the free hand just to kind of get that again into your, your muscle memory. So here, uh, maybe a little, little too, 
too light this 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 quickly here. Okay, I'm just going to try and get some of these some petals onto the sunflowers here. Uh, yep, Crypt Shadow. Uh, I actually have another one that I did right around that same time. Uh, unfortunately, the format is a little bit, it's a vertical instead of horizontal. So I, I'm also going to try and get a picture of that one. I would also like to repaint that ship one that I'm talking about here. Uh, the one that uh, I don't have as a scene right now. But yeah, we've been at the 2D art for quite a while. We've been we've been doing this for a little while. The the miniatures, that's a more recent thing, starting back in 2000, 2001. So the the miniatures much newer than the 2D art. All right, so we've got our sunflowers in place now. All right, Command Mittens, uh, we'll certainly be here. We'll certainly be here waiting for you. It's about a little bit more of the, maybe the Van Dyke Brown, and see what we can do here for, for the eyes. Right over the top here. And I think we'll stick with the lighter... Lighter color for the eyes, too, maybe. Okay, there, a little bit of eyebrow action. Potentially some dark for the nose. Potentially some dark underneath the eyes for that lower lid. Just a smidge, just a, a hint of it there. And I think uh, we definitely want to have that little bit of the the bluish green uh, tint there. Let's uh, clean up a little bit of the petals here while we're at it. And then uh, maybe let's get some lighter skin colors on this if we can. So we'll, we'll keep going. I think with the Brilliant yellow, maybe maybe a touch of the radiant lemon. Also got to get some red in the shadow areas of the cheeks as well. So this should be significantly lighter here. Uh, Unreal, nice to see you. Oh my gosh, it has been quite some time. Boy, Unreal, it's unreal how all the 3D printing stuff has just changed everything here. It has massively changed everything. In fact, uh, well, this is what I'm hoping to be painting tomorrow night here, the Ghost of Kiev and that MiG-29 that we printed out uh, yesterday. So hopefully that's going to be a fun thing to paint tomorrow night. We got Cinder in the house too. So Unreal, what kind of stuff? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that work and life at it because that's kind of how it's been for everybody work has just been absolutely insane and i'm sure it's been the same for you just absolutely crazy uh let's see uh yep why uh that's that sounds great zero they well the van dyke brown prussian blue they really are such amazing colors and you know, the Van Dyke Brown, well, also, too, it depends which Van Dyke Brown you have, too, right? If you've got the Windsor Newton one, that's one thing. If you got the Williamsburg version, that's another. So there's there's also just the, the differences between those versions. My goodness. Uh, yep, and, oh, and, and the kids, too. Yep, people, uh, well, kids in school, not in school, then back in school, then sort of back in school, then... Not back in school, then back again. So I can only imagine uh, some of the mayhem associated with that, too. Let me see if I can just do a little bit of this here to separate these guys. Yeah. Uh, so all the O's are Windsor Newton. So yeah, the the Windsor Newton Van Dyke Brown is essentially like burnt umber. Uh, it's it's really weird how they're so different. 
but the Van Dyke Brown from Gamlin and Williamsburg are massively different from the Windsor Newton version. So that's what doesn't really surprise me then that you ended up with sort of an olive color there. Instead of something actually even darker. Uh, well, Cinder, uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say that a few people, uh, a few a few vehicles, I guess uh, apparently yesterday experienced uh, a visit from St. Javelin. And, and classic uh, Michael Vittman style, take out the lead tank, take out the, the back, uh, the furthest to the rear tank, and then uh, destroy the rest at your leisure. Let's see if we can take a little bit of the paint out of that brush and almost use this like a bit of a blending brush right here. Yeah, zero, uh, well, any any little experiments like that, those are always, it's always fantastic to have an unexpected result because, well, I, I try to actually have those uh, as often as I can when, when I'm painting stuff, and so I try and do as many experiments as possible just to see what kind of new and interesting things can happen. So again, we're just going to take some of this and try to work that into our lighter sort of terra rosa mix here. Terra rosa, brilliant yellow pale. Uh, uh, oh, thanks, uh, thanks, Joke Slam, and greetings to you as well. Thanks so much for joining us. I might, I, yeah, I'm going to try and lighten up this blue a, a smidge more here. Uh, let's see what we can do for the eyes right here. Okay, there's one. There's the other. And we'll let those have a chance to just set right there. So this took all of uh, this whole thing so far, 46 minutes. That's it, 46 minutes. Oh, we, wanted, we were hoping to go maybe a different shade of blue here. Let, let's see if we can... I might have to go and retrieve a little bit of the... Well, radiant blue here, because this is just about a goner there. All right, here, I'm going to set this thing down, because holding those both in my hand is not the easiest thing to do. So yeah, I I, uh, I don't know if that was there. I think there was two scenes. There was one to the far east, and then there was one to the west of the city. And it looked like a couple of columns uh, got lit up really good. Uh, let's see, I'm not trying to. I'm like the paints. Uh... Well, Unreal. Uh, one of the things, and you've I'm sure you've heard me talk about it in the, the videos and such is to work on multiple figures at one time or even something that's really big because well effectively that slows you down right it slows you down so that you can let those areas of paint set so never a bad idea to have multiple things going at the same time especially with the oils So that, that blue is a little bit different than the, the blue we are going to have on the actual marine there. Uh, Cinder, uh, something kind of tells me that the the Ghost of Kiev might be a whole bunch of dudes with Stinger missiles. Um, it, of course, it would have been nice if... Uh, some aircraft had been actually sent there, but didn't happen, so is what it is, right? But yeah, something something tells me that maybe those were mostly Stinger missiles or, you know, SAs or something like that of some variety. 
I mean, I, I don't know, for, uh, Serge, do you, do you think uh, that it was most likely, uh, you know, a couple of different shoulder-fired missiles there? It would be great if it was. Uh, Cinder, it would sure be great if it was. I, I would uh, certainly be all in for that. So here, what we're trying to do is, again, just get... Uh, some differences here with our flowers. I'm going to grab some of the radiant blue. Not radiant turquoise. We already have plenty of that out here, but a little bit of radiant blue. Oh, let's see. So Alexander... No, so, so Alexander goes slow enough that the oils will dry. We're also going to welcome in Flight Sim. How are you doing there, Flight Sim? Well... I guess uh, we will be doing some flight stuff. We will be painting this tomorrow. And again, Sarge, thanks so much for the images. Uh, again, uh, you know, hopefully maybe there is somebody out there that is uh, a so, uh, kind of a terror of the skies. That would be nice. Get some of that. Gonna go back to a little bit of the Prussian blue there. Yeah, so that's the. This should be a little bit different. Not quite so greenish and turquoise as the others. That's a little too much paint there. Let's uh, back off on that a bit. Yeah, I think, now, I don't know if those are only coming from Turkey or if someone else has also uh, been providing those too. It would be nice if it was several someone else's. I, I believe something along the 12,000 between the Javs and the Stings, somewhere around 12,000 of those in country, which means, uh, well... Uh, those 10% losses, I think those are going to mount substantially. Uh, so, if, uh, yeah, Flight Sim, I know Dano, he's, there's been a couple of things he was waiting for for his printer, and they just basically never showed up. So do feel sorry for the folks uh, in Australia there. Well, either getting roasted or flooded or just not getting anything shipped. Just all kinds of crazy stuff like that here. Let's see if I can't get a little bit lighter. It's blue there over there. So that's about what we need. Let's see if we can maybe even lighten up the eye just a bit here. Uh, something uh, just tells me. So Sarge, wouldn't you think that that's just going to be the feature? Because manned vehicles are just going to be too exp too expensive and too easy to take out. I'm just waiting for more unmanned stuff to just kind of start taking over from those type of deals. Because, again, they're just too expensive. Now, you, you do have to kind of keep uh well you know we were talking about the winter winter war of 39 we also don't want to draw too many conclusions because well just uh like somebody drew some conclusions from the winter war of 39 and it turned out that in 1940 uh, one things were a little bit different So hopefully, uh, people won't be too premature on the on the conclusions there, and maybe uh, make sure they think about it. here. Let's get some of our a little bit of that uh, radiant green mixed into the thalo here, and let's start to get some lights on the beads here. Hey, Von Doodles, how you doing? Nice to see you back. Nice to see you back. I know for 
for some folks that they haven't been able to join us for a while, they've never seen me painting Space Marines on the stream. And, well, until a week ago, I hadn't either. Now, it, it all kind of started with the Commander Z miniature. And then it just kind of uh, blossomed from there. Here's the Commander Z figure. This is the one that we painted, I think it was, it was two weeks ago, maybe. It might have been uh, Thursday from a couple of weeks ago. And then we painted uh, this one. Right, and that was, uh, again, a little bit of a seam, as you can see. And then we painted this one. Now we're, we're gearing up on this one, and we will be painting up another one on uh, Saturday, I do believe. Right here. And we want to have what looks like descending and ascending characters. Now that paint is too thin. It will just become a pin line wash, and that uh, is not what I want to have. And I have just the right amount there. And uh, these these liner brushes, these are not expensive at all. I mean, maybe at about five, six, no, uh, about five something dollars a piece. But they really make things like this quite easy. Get back to this purity seal over here. Now, we don't want to just paint little lines on there. We're trying to have individual, as best as we can, some individual letters here. Maybe even some paragraph breaks because syntax and all. Here, let's... Uh... Ah, boy, a couple of other edges here that went a little wonky. We need to sharpen those up. And this... Needs to be darkened a little bit. Again, the, that little bit of reflected light, that's what's going to give you that that metal look to the surface. Once again, we're just going to tone some of those uh, restroom management. We are, well, we're almost four hours in, so that is not a bad time to start to think about you say, oh man, okay, I see some brush strokes there. I'm just going to go in, and all I'm doing is just tapping at this. See, there's a brush strokes there. Just a little bit of tapping with a dry brush that has no paint on it makes all the difference. Now, let's see if we can do the Snake Island symbol here. It's, it kind of takes a couple of phases to do that. Turn this around so I can see it. And let's get back to, again, some of our Van Dyke brown here. And it starts up here. Again, the shield a little bit in the way. No big deal. And then it's just a, a bunch of these uh, cunts, these rings here. So there's our first one. We'll get to our second one here. And, of course, I, I don't mind that the yellow sort of mixes in there because, in a way, that's what's given us our sheeting. And then the last, the last loop here. It's a, a bit like a snowman, I have to say. So, again, there's your snake island flag like you see on the... Uh, Lower right hand side of the screen. All right, Deuce, you have a good one. And thanks uh, thanks for hanging out as always. Hopefully we see you tomorrow. Again, uh, the, the plan is tomorrow to be painting that Ghost of Kiev uh, MiG-29. That that'll be interesting because the well the last aircraft that I did that was last June. Where there we go. 
Uh, that was, uh, well, love me some historicals, and that was, now that I had to do with the acrylics because I actually had to paint those insignia by hand. Those are not decals. None of that stuff, that's that's all free-handed on there. And we had, what, two, four, six of those to do? Yeah, that was, oof, that was interesting. It was very interesting, but we, we managed to do it. Somehow managed to get that done. Hi, Snickson. How you doing? Well, Bithron, I know that you got to be really tired because uh, it's been a long, long day for you. But thanks for, for dropping in. Really appreciate it, of course. So we have Snickson. Uh, well, it all, again, it all, all started with this. And uh, this is the Commander Z uh, charity figure again from reptilian overlords then we did this one on saturday that was uh quite interesting and well then it moved on to this guy and it's uh, morphed into an entire squad because yes there's more there's there's even more there's uh six of these overall now oh, thanks nixon now uh, it's it's pretty wild to get a chance to work on some uh some space marines again it's been quite uh, some time. Oh, thanks, Snick Sun. Uh, and well, here's that uh, that SU twenty nine that we'll be uh, painting tomorrow, and it even has the ten the ten hash marks on there, which is uh, I find really hilarious. All right, uh, thanks, thanks again, uh, Vitran. Uh, Appreciate you hanging out. <clears throat> I know that you're really, really tired. That I can totally identify with. And that H is a little bit wide, probably. Again, not uh, exactly up on my Cyrillic, but... Uh, it's our X. Then we'll get the Y in the N, if that's what those are. And we're probably going to have to move, yeah, we're going to have to move all of this stuff over just a bit, I think. But first, let's uh, tighten up a couple of things here. Like this. Some more on that sword. Maybe even carry that dark a little further backwards here. Maybe, uh, maybe with some thalo green, actually. And now it's time to do the little blending magic that we do. Soften that all up. Nice and easy. Same thing over here. Down here, we'll spread some of that out. Do I need to darken down anything? Yeah, maybe this here. Maybe darken that down too. And it's been really interesting to do a well, different flavor on each one of these. Uh, I've got one more, I think, open. No, maybe two open shields to do. Yeah, i got two more to do. I want to do a blonde here one. But the sunflower, that's the one thing that kind of runs through all of them. And then, of course, we have uh, on a couple of occasions here, we're going to have the, the white Z. Uh, kind of some messed up armor laying on the ground with the white Z. Because uh, I think that would be very appropriate. Now we're back to, this is pretty much the straight up uh, 
Yeah, this is our radiant green. Let's see what this is going to do for us here. Because a lot of white in there. I don't want quite so much white there. I also want to get a little bit of light into this. Possibly even maybe have a... I don't know if I want to have it with that little bit of crackling lightning or whatever kind of effect or energy effect. But first off, we're just going to do this, right? See, we've got a blob of it right here. See, that's not a blob anymore. Hey, Daka Daka, nice to see you. Well, happy Friday morning. Well, and that's uh, for some folks, it is already Friday afternoon. So to all of our Australian friends. Uh, nope, not not there. Maybe here. Yeah, let's get some of that radiant green reflected on this part of the sword. It will definitely over here. And I might even start using that radiant green as a bit of a Highlight color in a couple of other spots here, too. Uh, just for the heck of it. Won't be super noticeable. Uh, so, Snickson, this whole unit has... that. That's what. That's the whole idea here. As, as, as you can see. And, of course, well, there's your... There's your banner with... Uh, and you've got the coat of arms on everybody's pauldron there. You have the Snake Island flag on the shoulders. So, yep, that is uh, all in the Ukrainian colors there. We've got, again, three more guys that we're going to be doing. Now, I actually did do a uh, Patreon video on the conversion of this. Like, this one arm was just four pieces, just that one arm there. And then how I used a piece of plastic as kind of some ruined armor and how we did the, the basing with the cork and our traditional uh, uh, texture paste. And again here, how we took all the stuff off the shields to try and make those nice and flat so that we could do these designs right here. Now, so Snickson, what kind of stuff have you been working on? Oh, let me just get an open spot over here. Let me take a little bit of the green, more of that violet. And let's just get some little hint of light here on the ground. Not really going to do, I don't think I'm going to do too much as far as freehand designs on this marble. Maybe a tiny bit there, but not too much. So we're just going to do this very, very minimal right here. So yeah, we're uh, ultimately going to do six, and then if I can also, uh, well, I've got some vehicles that are printed out, uh, especially that there's one definitely marine-style vehicle. I also have some bikes that I could do, so I was thinking we would do some bikes with this uh, color scheme, and well, just see where it takes us. Uh, originally, the kind of homebrew Space Marine chapter that I wanted to do is going to have more of an Ossiarch flavor to it. I mean, it's not like I can't do that still. But this uh, definitely uh, kind of struck my fancy. So we're going to continue with this theme, I think, for a little while. All right, I'm going to go back to that dark here on our, on our snake. Like so. Then we'll come back with the yellow. There's a couple of places that just need some, again, a little bit of adjusting. Darken this out a little bit more with some Van Dyke Brown, I think. Might uh, get a little bit of that sort of greenish light here. Again, this is not going to be quite the glowing sword type of thing that we usually do. Just It's more of a suggestion. It's a hint of it. 
I'm going to take my, again, the Indian. No, sorry, that's the Camium Yellow. Some of the Brilliant Yellow Pale. Let's see what we can do up here on the this icon. Just to, again, solidify that 100%. Sharpen up a couple of those edges. Same up here, right along the edge of the blue. Do a little bit of stippling right there. Stippling is okay. Uh, it, it's not necessarily a way to circumvent the whole uh, thick over thin and vice versa, but it, it can be helpful. I'm at uh, more of that brilliant yellow pale. Again, I might uh, see what happens if I go a little bit further with something. Just to again give it a little, a uh, little bit of sparkle there. And then we got these crazy little pouches right here. Don't know how much more I want to do on those, at least not right now. And I'm going to see if I can do a couple of little extra bits of light here. I don't know if I want to lighten any of the this area too much. We do need some shadow. This never did get its lightest light along that edge now when i was uh, doing all the shield conversion that stuff kind of got nuked a little bit so i have to sort of i have to basically draw that line in instead of just having a physical line that i can kind of highlight on one side there's a little bit of, there we go that's that's what i needed to do We'll also bring up a little bit of our light down there. Touch more over here. I never did get that. And I might even yeah, let's let's do this. Let's get a little bit. So we'll try to refine the, the shield as, as much as we can in these areas. Don't really want to lighten up the nose anymore. Thought about yeah, I get a little bit more of a light there on the lips. Uh, let's throw a couple of more. Almost to get like earrings. Didn't get a chance to do that on the other one, but here I, I think this should be fun. I actually changed that into also the maybe some of the clothes. Can replace that with a little bit of our yellow white. Might bring out a little bit more in some of these sunflowers here. Oh, I'm going to maybe throw some rust down on the uh, this rebar, I think. Let's see if I can just uh, grab some Terra Rosa very quickly here. Almost forgot about that. And then we can do a little pin line wash to have that sort of stain the surrounding area. And uh, again, I've got a Patreon series that I'm doing uh, with this particular course came in. The last episode was doing the converting and basing of the miniatures. Then we'll be doing some tutorials on 
the actual painting process. And uh, now this is a little sneak peek at uh, what I hope to be painting tomorrow. And this is the uh, Ghost of Kiev, the SU-29, or the MiG-29, sorry. Flown, well, possibly flown by the Ghost of Kiev. That is available from Titan Forge Miniatures. And I also, again, I'm, uh, I have their regular Patreon thing have for years, and not for years, but for many months, I think over a year now. Actually, yeah, over a year. And they do some fantastic miniatures. Really amazing. Uh, so, uh, Alexander, it will depend what colors that you used. If you use cadmiums, well, it will take longer to dry, of course. Now, if you actually use things like the Radiance or uh, maybe even like the Gamlin Quick Dry White, that will that'll cut down on the time. Uh, if you got things like Fanchon Red in there, that could up the drying time. Uh, same thing with Thalo Green, for whatever reason. That seems to also, well, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue... Those seem to also, for whatever reason, take uh, longer for stuff to dry. I don't know why. It's weird, but it just seems to happen that way. Uh, well, Alexander, that could be, uh, I mean, it could be pushing the limit, but just uh, see what it's like, I guess, uh, tomorrow night or whatever. And, uh, of course, if that's not in an area where you're going to be sculpting, then it then doesn't really matter. Then you should be okay. But, uh, yeah, like, like I said, you will want to give things a couple of days, maybe before, you know, sculpting over things, but... Uh, if maybe you've only got the paint in that one area and you won't be sculpting there... Just trying to darken the edge of that a little bit. And then this, where's my blending brush here? Ah, there we go. Smooth that out a bit. Uh, Alexander, that's not going to work for the oils. That uh, It might make it crack, but it's not going to make it dry any faster because it's not, uh, that would be acrylics because the oils do not dry they don't, well, they, they cure, they don't dry. So in some ways, oils are more like green stuff. Yeah, that, that'll just probably cause it to crack, which I'm sure is not a result that you want to have. So my suggestion would be just to, yeah, you can't artificially dry the oil stuff. It, it dries when it dries. Now, it doesn't hurt when it's in a not humid environment or when it's a, a little bit warmer as opposed to colder. That that won't hurt. It won't make it, uh, let's put it this way, it won't dry slower if it's in that kind of environment. It, it's uh, what the only thing that's really going to make a difference in the drying time is how much paint you've got on there. And, and like we were talking about just a second ago, what what colors you might have used. If you've got a lot of slow drying colors on there, and there's a few that just kind of, uh, they're just sort of like that, it uh, could take a little while for that to dry. Now, oh yeah, I need to get some more re uh, reflected light on that piece of armor. I don't even know if you can see that. Now, Alexander, the those seem to dry relatively quick. I would have to say, in comparison to other stuff, and well, of course, they also dry nice and flat, don't they? Nice and matte. So yeah, those those will 
should help, I think, maybe with the drawing process just a little bit. Again, I don't do stuff with uh, Galkids or the Elkids or anything like that. It's just, uh, I'm not looking to speed up the drying time. I know that uh, you kind of got, a, you're in an emergency situation there. And that, that's why there have been times where I just had to use the acrylics instead of being able to use the oils. Because if, there's a, if it's got to be in the mail the next day or something like that, well, it's just got to be in the mail the next day. And sadly, we have to use the acrylics. So, again, there was, a, again, some brush strokes there. We just wanted to kill those. Hey, Skull Rages, how you doing? Nice to see you again. Oh, let's uh, do a couple more darks along the edge of this because, no, that's too dark, too dark. We got to go in between the two, mid to there, that's it. That's more like it. Little Prussian blue here for a little bit of dark right there. And some more this way. Oh, well, thanks, Skull Rages. And well, I hope that the printer is behaving itself because, you know, <laughs> you know, printers, they have a mind all their own. Uh, they are definitely possessed. They are demonic. Because otherwise they wouldn't be able to torture and torment us quite so easily. Again, just trying to find a little bit of reflectivity back here on some of these, well, what should be shiny surfaces. Yeah, I mean, uh, i completely reliant on that printable. It knows, it knows that we are completely, I am anyways, uh, somewhere around about 90 some odd percent of everything that I paint is 3D printed. So it's pretty darn important for that thing to, to keep on working. That's for sure. Uh, it's okay, uh, 1020. Well, Alexander, I uh, do wish you luck with that. And of course, uh, well, and I've, I've seen uh, some of those. Actually, Alexander, if you wanted to share, uh, I know you got those posted to the Discord. If you wanted to share those so that people in the chat could see them. Because uh, I know you've got, uh, I don't know if you have the very latest posted in the Discord. But I know you got some pictures in there. And that's, uh, it's a fun place where people can go, speaking of oils, where people can go and kind of talk about the oils. Uh, compare notes, maybe say, you know, hey, I can get, does anybody know where I can get this brand or this whatever? Uh, you know, it, in this country or something like that. So it can be a very handy resource. Ah, okay. Yeah, Skull Rage is... Uh, and it, it's weird how sometimes that can get knocked out of kilter in the most bizarre ways. It also, too, depends on, boy, the way that printer is. Because some printers, it's it's very easy to do the, the leveling. And other ones, it's it's also very easy to knock them out of their, uh, their level. Very strange how that uh, works. Did I ever get the blue over here? Nope, never really did. I'm going to try and uh, sneak in a little bit of this. 
under the gold right there because it needs that can't be right next to all that blue and not have some I right, Neptune 2s wow that uh that is one that I have not heard of before and if everybody can go please check uh, Alexander's uh, post there on his Song of Ice and Fire miniatures and uh, offer plenty of kudos and words of encouragement. That would be very nice. Is that going to be too light there? I don't know. Just do a little bit of stippling right there. Get just to lighten that a smidge. Now, as it's getting to be almost 5 o'clock in the morning here, and we do actually have to... Uh, we're going to be streaming again tomorrow. I think uh, I think Anamari is streaming, so we might just head over Anamari's way. Uh, the first oil painted mini is currently working on a competition. But, oh, the weird wood tree. Yeah, boy, Alexander, I wish you could have seen... Uh, some of the blog posts that I did, I actually was going to try and do a, a weirwood tree because I'd had so much success with my method on uh, bolt action, or trees for bolt action. Well, I'm using it for Lord of the Rings, too. But I never did get a chance to do a weirwood tree. That would have been fun to do that. I mean, I could still do that. Well, a tree like it, a flowering tree anyway. That would be fine for, for elven terrain. Oh, actually, that would be really nifty, I think. Yeah, I should probably do something like that. 